Hey, how's it going? It's Keith from the CTOadvisor.com with today's CTO Daily Dose for October 24th, 2017. I've been working on this blog post. At least I've been working on it in my mind. I got the first paragraph written down about containers versus platform as a service. So this is therapeutic for me as much as it's hopefully informative to you. And I've been working through this concept since... Uh, before DocuCon 2017 EU last week, there's this thing that, that's been kind of eating at me as to when is it applicable, if at all, to use a platform as a service such as Cloud Foundry, Microsoft Azure platform as a service, and the number of passes that's available versus constructing and bringing your own to bear. There's variations of the two it's not a new topic. You know, we've had service-oriented architectures in the past, and now we've just layered cloud on top. And Pivotal Cloud Foundry has been teaming up with VMware to blur the lines between containers, paths, traditional infrastructure. Where does all of this kind of play? So let's start off with the basic concept of a microservice versus a platform as a service. So typically, we're thinking about building microservices based off of containers, an application that has microservice based on containers. So we might have SAML running in a container as a microservice. Um, I'm trying to think of other services. So we might have a messaging bus running as part of a container platform. And then finally, we may have uh, specific to your application, let's say a encoding app uh, service running inside of a container. You could then bundle all of this up, put it into a Kubernetes scheduler, and then have your applications consume each individual microservice that leaves, lives in, in a container, and you can pretty much build your own pass, so to speak, uh, without engaging a Pivotal or Zor or, or et cetera. That allows developers to pull, pull out uh, containers and microservices from uh, repository as needed. So if they wanted to use TIPCO as the messaging bus, they could use TIPCO for their messaging bus. That's compared to kind of the black box that is a pass. So let's say we have Cloud Foundry as a pass. So Cloud Foundry will have in that a very rigid set. It have its, and I don't know enough about Cloud Foundry to say that it has its own messaging bus. But as an example, it have its own messaging bu bus. It have its own equivalent for SAML. It would have uh, 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 API gateway, etc. It have all these services already bundled in. You basically rolled out Cloud Foundry, and your developers have to consume it as available. So as the as a, as a developer needs a new microservice, they consume the microservice from Cloud Foundry and build their application based on that Cloud, Cloud Foundry principle. I don't think anyone from Cloud Foundry or Pivotal would disagree with me. It's called an opinionated pass for a reason. It gives you a consistent platform across application teams to develop your solution versus containers as they bring your own microservices or bring your own path solution. The blog post that I'm working on is kind of comparing those two approaches. When should you use one versus the other? Application development isn't my core skill set, so you know what? It is a, a bit of a, a stretch project for me, but I'd love to hear your feedback. Container-based approach to microservices or a opinionated path such as Zor or on-premises, Cloud Foundry, or even stuff that Red Hat is doing, hit me up on the Twitter, at CTO Advisor on Twitter, or on the web, the CTOAdvisor.com, or the best place to have a conversation is on LinkedIn. Keith, the 
LinkedIn profile is linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash KL Townsend. Talk to you next CTO Daily Dose.